Hi everyone, good to see you again in INCCL Summit ASEAN 2022. Thank you for us here and it is my pleasure to be joined by Mr. Abai Gusalkar, the Vice President of Data Center Infrastructure and Solution for Talent Cluster of Snyder Electric. How have you been, Kun Abai? I've been very well, Maria. Thank you very much. Great. So I think today we are going to talk a bit more about sustainability and digital infrastructure, right? And of course, based on the market trends and discussion across the region, we surely see the trends of digital infrastructure becomes the important element in enterprises' digital transformation journey. And based on our survey, IDC Future Enterprise and Resiliency Survey as well, more than 30% of enterprises in Southeast Asia have put sustainability as one of the top agendas in the digital first era strategy. So what about you, right? What, what do you think about it? What trends do you see in the market right now? And how relevant it is to see the importance of sustainability in digital infrastructure strategy these days? Wonderful, Maria. So I think uh, as you have seen that the 30% uh, of customers are looking at sustainability as a key criteria. So just want to emphasize that uh, sustainability is not something which is new, right? Uh, every industry, we're looking at sustainability as one of their uh, top requirements. But we learned a lot since past two years, right? How we are developing ourselves. And uh, what is really important for us today is how we can uh, uh, take care of our, or take care of our planet and the atmosphere. And uh, specifically, when you look at the digital infrastructure, where uh, people are moving towards cloud, uh, converge IT, but at the end, all of this sits in on the on the hardware, and this hardware sits into a, a power dense data center. And uh, we were looking at some enterprise data centers uh, eight years back, but now because of the, uh, the the movement in cloud, the infrastructure is now moving towards more onto power dense uh, infrastructure, right? On the on the on the data center side. Right. And now what we have seen, these data centers have become very power hungry. So the, the power utilization in these data centers are, are much higher than uh, a standard industry or commercial buildings. So then sustainability uh, in this specific aspect becomes uh, uh, very critical. And we have seen the trend uh, like what you must have heard in, in Singapore, in other mature countries. Uh, this has become a norm in, in from a government standpoint as well that uh, your data centers has to a specific uh, efficiency requirement or uh, how you are taking care of your entire uh, value chain on the carbon neutrality. So those those factors have started becoming more and more important. And also all the all the uh, content giants like so Google's and uh, YouTube's, uh, they're also starting specifying these requirements, right? When they look at their co-location sites or when they look at setting up their own infrastructure, this has become one of the key criteria. And this trend, uh, is, 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 is becoming more and more relevant now to East Asia. And we are seeing all of these uh, uh, big pro providers are driving sustainability as, as the requirement. And also a few governments also started putting together these expectations uh, in, their, uh, in their specifications. And that's how uh, it's becoming more and more relevant and uh, required for the data center industry uh, in East Asia. Right. So yeah, I think it's uh, you put it very on point as well here, right? So you mentioned about how the power utilization is increasing and how the efficiency is also being required and how the trends of the hyperscalers as well that are coming into the Southeast Asia, especially uh, or in Asia Pacific is also extending and require a bit more like the global standards, especially in the sustainability as well. So this is something that we are also seeing as well in the market and uh, becoming more relevant as well uh, for the digital, uh, digital infrastructure strategy as well for enterprises. And we are seeing that, and for me personally, it is also exciting to see how the ESG uh, or sustainability issues are growing as well amongst enterprises in Southeast Asia. However, we believe that and we, we still observe uh, as well that there is still a gap of understanding and priorities among enterprises and to enable and focus on the sustainability, right? Um, however, we also see the, the predictions that 60% uh, of the Asia Pacific, uh, top Asia Pacific, uh, top, sorry, top, top 2,000 Asia Pacific uh, companies here uh, that 
the next uh, RFPs will require funders to prove progress on sustainability as well, which is good. This could be like the drivers as well. Um, and uh, I think one of the things that will be more asked is going to be on the case studies, Punabai, because you know how to actually fill the gap and uh, the gap between the demands or supplies as well. Uh, we want to see as well the case study, right? So do you have any case studies that you can share to the audience today here, uh, the success stories uh, when the enterprises consider the sustainability on the digital infrastructure, uh, digital infrastructure as well, especially in the uh, data centers. Is there any case study that you can share to us today? So definitely. So I think uh, you know before going to a, a case study uh, at this uh, specific uh, requirement, I just want to highlight something uh, just to complement what you uh, mentioned, right? Uh, it is very important that sustainability is taken at the strategy level by the customers. Right. Right. The beginning of a sustainability journey is when at the sea level, uh, you're looking at uh, setting up the right prospects around sustainability, right? That means set the right bold actionable strategy around how they establish and drive sustainability within the organization. And then from a data center perspective, uh, how we can design and develop the, the right design for data centers. So it starts right from planning, putting the actionables, going into how we design data centers. Then, of course, once the data center is designed, how do we drive it operationally? Because at the end, the, the efficiency or the sustainability is not something which is on spot measured. It's measured across the life cycle of data center. So it becomes also essential that how we drive the sustainability or efficiency during the uh, data center operations. And then, of course, there are a few aspects around this uh, power requirement where how we buy some renewable power, how we manage our uh, scope one, scope two, scope three uh, carbon emissions within the site. And then, of course, how we can uh, decarbonize the entire supply chain. When I say decarbonize the entire supply chain, that means the power which is feeding to the uh, data center, the products which are used within the data center, the suppliers which are used uh, to get the, uh, the the product or services within the data center. So that's basically mapping the entire ecosystem of uh, the uh, data center uh, uh, infrastructure, right? So that becomes uh, one of the key uh, criteria when we drive uh, the data center efficiency. And as you have seen, uh, this has become, uh, uh, we are still not matured enough within uh, East Asia, but definitely we are building up ourselves to get there, right? So that's where uh, we we do have some success stories, but of course, this success stories is coming from uh, uh, much mature uh, uh, countries, where uh, we have seen uh, this is deployed in one of the uh, site in uh, in the Europe, where uh, this specific customer has deployed a data center into a NATO base uh, site, which is uh, which is uh, underground. And they're using the natural resources, which is the uh, uh, water and the power, which is used to run the, generate, run the uh, data center by having hydroelectric power. And also using the natural free cooling available in the, that specific continent to uh, support the, uh, the uh, cooling systems. And then they are reusing the heat dissipated from the data centers to uh, heat the other components within uh, their infrastructure. So it's basically they are using the entire uh, uh, aspects of power and cooling to ensure that they are able to bring net zero carbon emission within their uh, within their site or uh, their center.
So as uh, as you must have seen, Nagarya, uh, that uh, how this specific customer has taken the available uh, uh, natural resources yeah. to run their data center and manage the uh, net zero carbon uh, uh, into their data center, right? And they're able to reduce their uh, carbon emissions. And in fact, uh, now they are using absolute zero fossil fuel to run their facility. But again, as I said, this is very specific to this customer because they are running it in a specific environment. But few, few of those uh, st uh, practices can also be used uh, in our environment to achieve uh, the sustainability goal for our customers. Right. So you mentioned the, some of the key benefits, right, including the, the, the net zero carbon emission and then also the cost as well that is actually lesser right now by having um, but by having uh, consideration regarding to the sustainability as uh, one of the elements in the digital infrastructure strategy or the data center strategy as well. Uh, is there anything else uh, Kuna buy in terms of the key benefits that the enterprises as well uh, should consider as well? You know, maybe it's related with the uh, profitability or maybe from the revenue integration. I mean, that the end goal that can represent from the business perspective. Is there any other benefits that you can think of as well? Absolutely. So, in fact, uh, you know, it's not it's not very popular still in East Asia, but definitely a few countries are driving it uh, by bringing in the uh, energy attribute certificates, right? Which are which are called as uh, ESCs. Uh, that's basically a call to receive some renewable energy credits, right? Okay. Uh, this is now very popular uh, in the in the US uh, and the European countries, but now as we see, that's becoming more and more trend. And definitely, uh, a few mature countries in East Asia also started following up uh, those kind of aspects. So, what enterprise can see that when they deploy uh, their infrastructure into uh, the colo infrastructure, or even if they are building at, uh, they are they are planning to build their own infrastructure. They can, they can achieve those uh, renewable energy credits. And then by this, uh, they can bring in the sustainability aspect within their uh, specific data centers, right? right. What, what does that mean concretely? Uh, this means that they're able to achieve the higher efficiencies by minimizing uh, the, the PUE number, which is the power utilization effectiveness, which is defined by Green Grid. And having the right design and write operational philosophies, we can bring down the PUEs uh, up to the level of between 1.6 to 1.3, depending on the design and capacities of the data center. So that brings the real efficiency, real energy efficiency and saving on the electricity bills. Second aspect is, uh, though the deployment of uh, this kind of renewable energies uh, can become a bit tedious, but they are still, for a long run, when you look at the OPEX perspective, they are still favorable on the uh, data center operation life cycle because then once you deploy them uh, in, 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 in tune of two to three years, you can start getting those results, right? Because you're not adding any uh, fossil fuel uh, into a data center and that becomes a more and more a point of achieving the, uh, the uh, carbon neutrality and reducing the uh, or decarbonizing their uh, data center. So when we look at one is from the efficiency standpoint, Second, it from the uh, decarbonization standpoint. And third, of course, is from how they can achieve the entire uh, uh, efficiency in their data center operations. So when you have energy efficiency, uh, carbon emission efficiency, and then operational efficiency, that's basically how they are uh, reusing the existing power, how they are uh, uh, managing their infrastructure by recirculating this, uh, uh, this infrastructure by reusing, by destroying it properly. So that's, that's the, that's the uh, overall uh, benefit which enterprise customers can achieve by uh, deploying the, the energy efficiency or sustainability criteria within data center. Of course, we have seen this, it's, not, uh, uh, it's still not very, very uh, popular, but I'm sure uh, when the requirement comes up, it becomes very, very essential for running up large scale data centers and also some key enterprise data centers. Yeah, uh, I get that the these trends will also will come to Southeast Asia, right? So uh, it is better to start uh, prepping as well on that perspective. So so thanks for, for sharing 
that experiences Kunabai uh, in house night electric supporting enterprises journey as well in digital infrastructure and sustainability. Now we can see for sure how and why sustainability matters in digital infrastructure and ecosystem. You, you mentioned about the energy efficiency, you mentioned about operational efficiency as well, that for sure for, for the past uh, decades, right, the enterprises are focusing into that area as well. Now, to conclude our discussion, can you provide us some suggestion here to the audiences, how to assure and start their data center sustainability journey? and how Snyder Electric can support them along the journey itself? So I think uh, definitely because, you know, uh, in the, the way Schneider Electric look at uh, the, the comprehensive data center sustainability journey, we, we define this philosophy by five key drivers. Uh, in fact, during our conversation, we did touch upon them a bit. But just to set this uh, as, as a proper uh, conclusion, I believe it is very important that uh, as an organization, we need to set the right strategies, right goals, and this, this goals should be actionable goals where we can look at the entire uh, holistic view of how the data center is operating, and then uh, how we can uh, support the entire sustainability journey or the strategies to minimizing the direct or indirect in environmental impacts on the uh, data center uh, operation. So that's basically starting at the setting of the right strategy. That's one of the key action items. The second is, uh, as we said, that we need to ensure how we prioritize the sustainability requirement as a key criteria to design the data center. So when you create a data center design, how we can ensure that the, the, the components or the uh, philosophy which is used in data center design has a right longevity and also serviceability to operate the specific data center. And the design has the uh, efficiency as in criteria which can be uh, repeatable and standardized across the data center design life cycle. And of course, having the right people, right uh, operating systems, right software solutions to ensure that whatever is deployed is run efficiently, operated efficiently, that can reduce the OPEX. And uh, of course, the, the longevity of uh, data center performance is also uh, being taken care of. Uh, looking at how we can buy some renewable energy there are many solutions available uh, like sub solar cells or even in our region we do have uh, hydroelectric power supplies so setting up right uh, ppas with uh, the local governments and getting the right solutions to get the uh, the energy efficiency credits uh, into their data center and of course the fifth one which is looking at the entire decarbonization of supply chain, right? How we can tackle these three sustainability requirements or how to tackle the, uh, the scope and scope to scope three emissions into their data center. And this entire journey, Schneider Electric uh, is, is driving as, as uh, our key criteria into data center segment. And just to add, we ourselves have taken uh, our own uh, responsibility to decarbonize our entire supply chain. So as, as we can see, uh, by, by reducing our uh, carbon emissions in, the, in our factories. So we have 200 over factories in, in, in the world. We have taken our own plush to reduce the carbon uh, uh, utilization in our factories by 2025. And in fact, uh, becoming net carbon, uh, carbon zero in our, uh, in our operations by uh, 2040. So these are our own uh, pledges which we have taken towards sustainability. And with that, we can add uh, this kind of services to our customer to meet their sustainability expectations in the, in the data center lifecycle. So that's how uh, Schneider can support our customers and become a partner in their digital journey or sustainability journey uh, in the, into their data centers. That's great. So set the right strategy and tools in the uh, data center operation, uh, put some prioritization as well in the sustainability criteria. So I think that will be important as well, right, Kunabai, as part of the journey. Uh, and then Absolutely. put the right people and the technology as well in the journey. Uh, you also mentioned about leverage or use the renewable energy starting from now. And then uh, look at look at into the decarbonization of the supply chain uh, uh, process or management as well as part of the, the journey, right, in terms of the sustainability management here. And all of this journey, all of these uh, all of these strategies or steps are also 
already supported by a little action here right now in the market so which is great so that sums up our discussion very well Kunabai. uh thanks for sharing the great insights practices experience as well uh so now that our audiences also shall consider the importance and benefits of sustainability in their digital infrastructure and i believe everyone learned so much from our discussion today thank you so much Kunabai. And thank you very much yeah, and to the audiences, thank you so much for watching now. Um, I think that's all for today. Bye now.